How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca, aka Dr. Calcano, and I'm a first year family medicine resident working and studying here in Canada. Now, I've wanted to do this video for a really long time now. I remember being back in pre med, so back still on undergrad, and really starting to look at the different options for medical school and coming across the international programs. These are the programs like the Caribbean based medical schools, the Ireland based programs, for example, and not really knowing where to look for good information. You really just back in the day would ask a few different people what they had heard about it. You did some digging online in various forums, but it really was this sort of broken telephone. I heard from a friend of a friend because I didn't really know anyone that had been to those programs. And I know that ever since then, and when I got into medical school and now being in residency, I'm asked by many different people about what my opinions on the Caribbean schools, for example, are. And I know there's some great information out there, but I really wanted to interview someone who has actually been through one of those programs and has now secured a residency back here in Canada to hopefully share their experiences with anyone that is looking to go to those programs or just learning a little bit more about them. So that's what we're gonna be doing here on the channel today. I've interviewed a family medicine resident here in Canada who is a recent graduate of the Seva University down in the Caribbean. Seva is one of the three big Caribbean medical schools, the other ones being Ross and SGU, so St. George University. And I wanted to ask ask them the big questions, the most important questions that I think that anyone looking into learning a little bit more about the Caribbean medical programs needs to know before they keep going down that path. Now, if you found this video helpful, please let me know. Go ahead, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you do want to see more in the future and leave me a comment letting me know what you think about this interview. Do you agree with what's been said here today? And what is your opinion on the various Caribbean medical schools and, and how things work on that end? So the first thing to say is that for this interview, I wanted the individual to to not feel like they needed to hold anything back. I wanted them to give us honest answers to our questions. So for that reason, it's going to be anonymous. I promise you that I did interview an actual Caribbean medical student who is now a first year resident in family medicine. Um, and, and this is what they had to say. My first question that I wanted to know from them is what their overall opinion of the program was. And they had a positive but mixed opinion of the program. They said that overall, they did enjoy it. The pro that they wanted to say is that it was an adventure to live on a beautiful island for two years, which I could totally see. And for those of you wondering why it's only two years that they lived on the island, it's because medical school is broken up, whether you're in the Caribbean or back here in Canada or the United States. The first two years is your pre-clerkship years where you're in the classroom studying. The second two years will be when you are doing your clinical electives. Now in the second two years, when you're on your rotations, even in the Caribbean, you will be all over the place. Sometimes in the States, sometimes if you could get an elective in Canada, for example, it depends on where you will be for your various different electives and main rotations. They said that because everyone on the island is living very far away from home for the most part, there's a good sense of community on the school. And they said that they made a lot of great friends while that they were there. Um, and they also said that the big pro here is that you need to remember, for the most part, people that are going to the Caribbean or one of these international medical programs from the States, from the UK, from Canada, for example, they've already tried or they've considered applying to medical school in their home country and they haven't gotten in. Which means that when you do go down to the Caribbean, the pro of graduating from that program is that you will be a doctor. You will have your MD once you graduate from the Caribbean program. That is the biggest pro when you consider the alternative of being rejected from your home schools and then not being able to go to medical school at all. Now the con, the big con that they wanted to say is that while it was relatively easy to be accepted into the island schools, when you look at the GPAs, the MCAT requirements, you'll see these are significantly less than for the mainland schools for the most part when we're looking at MD programs. The con here is that the program itself is very demanding with very little room for remediation they say they said that many of their classmates did not successfully complete the program and the reason for that is definitely going to be multifactorial when you have students going to a medical school and they didn't have necessarily the best GPA going in many people I would imagine do not have the best study habits the best ways of learning figured out for themselves yet and then when you show up to a very demanding program which is medical school Medical school is very demanding. It doesn't matter where you are. If you are unable to keep up, I could see a situation where you are falling behind. And they said that the school does not offer very much help in terms of remediation. You do need to keep in mind that with many of these island schools, these are all private institutions. They are for-profit institutions. 
And that's actually going to be another con. They are very, very expensive. I believe the last time I checked, we're talking about an excess of $300,000 for the four years. That's American currency um, to go and do your education down in, the, in the, uh, the Caribbean schools. The second question is actually one that I really wanted to know for a long time now. And that is, what is the exam process like? The board exam process, to say the least. Because if you are coming from a Canadian background, assumably many students will want to go back to Canada. And if you're coming from an American background, for an example, you'll have to go back to the States. And the path is a little bit different. So I wanted to know how it all worked out. I asked them, I said, did you write both the Canadian and the American exam? Does your school prepare you for one exam more than the other? And then when do you write the different exams? Their response was that in order to keep their options open, they applied to both the Canadian and American matches. At their particular school and for most of the other island schools, it is definitely structured to prepare you for the US match more so than the Canadian match. And it is an American school on the island. So that totally makes sense. For example, the graduation requirements of most of the Caribbean programs include the USMLE step one and step two exams. They do not include the Canadian exams in order to graduate from those schools. If an IMG decides to also apply for the Canadian match via the CARMS application, then there are also added exams that they must write prior to the match. The first is the MCCQE1, and the other is the NAC OSCE, or the Practical OSCE. So you have to do both of those if you are an IMG looking to apply to the Canadian match. For their particular school, so this is the Seba Medical School down in the Caribbean, they provided no particular guidance for preparing for these exams. So you're basically on your own for the Canadian exams. Internet research and the advice from other IMGs who also previously applied to the Canadian process was the biggest supports for study strategies and resources. They commented on looking things up on YouTube and being a part of online forums, but it is interesting to know that for the Caribbean programs, you get no help basically in getting ready for the Canadian exams. So the next question that I wanted to ask had to do with matching. For those of you that don't know, the match rates for IMGs in Canada and the United States are lower than for students who are studying in Canada or the United States for medical school. Now this student here wanted to stay in Canada and they said that they applied to both the Canadian and the American match because it would increase the potential that they matched somewhere. They said that once upon a time, the CARMS match, the Canadian match took place before the American match. This meant that if you were a Canadian that wanted to stay in Canada and were an IMG student, then you could apply to the Canadian match. And then if you weren't successful, be able to fall back on the American match. But ever since the pandemic, what's happened now is that the American match actually comes before the Canadian match. And what happens now, from my understanding here, is that if you do want to stay in Canada, you would have to take the gamble of withdrawing from the American match in early spring in order to still be eligible for a Canadian position when the Canadian match happens. And that creates a lot of pressure on Canadian IMGs that do want to come back. And therefore, another con of these programs here is that you do have to be very flexible in going wherever you are offered a residency space after completing the program. Now, they also said that between the American and the Canadian match, the CARMS match is more competitive for IMGs. And I'm pretty sure that when you look at the data, this is just because of the number of spots that are open for both of the programs. There are more residency spots available down in the States than there are in Canada. For example, Ontario only gave out around 300 family medicine interviews for all the IMGs, which is about one third of all of the applicants that applied. The student also said that it is very important to remember that when you are applying to both the Canadian and the American matches, it gets very expensive, especially because the exams, you have to pay for them separately. It all comes out of your own pocket. And just as an example, the, I believe that the USMLE Step 2 CK is like 650 American dollars. So when you compound that on top of the NAC OSCE, the Canadian MCCQE, and then the, the Step 1 for the American exams, on top of all of the separate applications, we're talking thousands of dollars that you are going to have to pay when it does come time for you to apply to both systems. Question number four, I wanted to ask them if they had any specific tips for people that were IMGs looking to apply to a Canadian residency afterwards. And they said that the, the trick here is that you have to start thinking about the Canadian applications very early. The enrollment process is through physiciansapply.ca. They made their account in early spring 2021 for the 2022 match, so about a year in advance. And from there, you have to sign up for the MCCQE1. They wrote in September of 2021. And then the NAC OSCE, they did in October of 2021. 
These exams must be completed before the applications are due, which is around January of the match year, but they have very limited exam dates. So making sure to take that initiative and booking the exams well in advance is very important here. This is that you have to be very, very organized. It's helpful to have a mentor who matched in a previous year or even a buddy who's also applying to CARMS at the same time, just so you could help keep your timeline straight. If someone that did apply to the Canadian match as a Canadian student, there are a lot of dates that you have to keep straight. And I can't even imagine how stressful it could be if you have to worry about both the Canadian and the American systems at the exact same time. I bet you could get very, very hectic. And finally, the last question that I had was any final tips that you want to share with anyone who is potentially looking to go to an international medical program down in the Caribbean? This is someone that made it through. They were able to pass all of their exams. They matched to the spot that they wanted here in Ontario in family medicine. And what they had to say was the first tip, don't do any real challenging rotations in the months leading up to the CARMS application deadline, as this is going to be a very busy time. Starting your personal statements early will help make this process and this time a lot less stressful. They said that if you want to match in Canada, then Canadian experience looks good. They had managed to find a few weeks of rotations in Ontario, and they think that the experience and the reference letters from the Canadian physicians in particular really strengthen their application. It would be the same thing if you were applying to an American program. That being said, it's also okay to not have Canadian specific experience. There are other ways to show commitment to practicing in Canada. And this could be through things like initiatives or different organizations that you take part in, or just even showing that you have lived experience, that you've come from a particular region where you're trying to match again. When you are getting ready to do your interviews and your matching process, it's all about constructing your narrative as to why you would be a great fit to be a resident in that area at that particular school. Tip number three is practice, practice, practice for your interviews. American interviews are much more relaxed than the Canadian interviews. This is what they said here. And because they thought the American interviews were more relaxed than the Canadian interviews, then doing the American interviews actually helped them to get ready for the Canadian ones, it gave them a little bit more experience and just overall feel of what the process would be like. Finally, their last tip is that if you work hard and stay organized, you can match in Canada. And it's the most amazing feeling when you do match. It's really nice to hear from them. But also you will get a good education no matter whether you match into the American system or the Canadian system. And I think that's really important and we'll probably end on this, especially if you are coming from an international program, whether you match into the Canadian programs or the American residency programs, these are two great systems, both have their pros and both definitely have their cons. But when people ask me whether or not they should go down to an international program, I think it's going to depend on a few different factors. One of those being your flexibility and how flexible you are, not only for the specialty that you will match into, but also geographically where you're going to end up. A lot of students do definitely feel burnt out. If, for example, you were thinking that you want to be a neurosurgeon and you come from an international program and you want to do neurosurgery in California and it just wasn't possible for you to get, and then you end up doing family medicine in Ontario. And if you weren't flexible going into that, I could see that situation being very, very difficult for you. But if you did have it in your head where you were open to family medicine, to pediatrics, to a few of these less competitive specialties in a few different areas, the match rate actually isn't as bad as you think. And especially if you look at the recent CARMS data from this most recent match cycle, the international students that were open to different specialties did actually tend to match very, very well. All right, everyone, and that's going to be it for today's video. I hope it was helpful. I hope we explained uh, a few different layers of depth and made things a little bit more clear for people looking to know the specifics of what it's like to go to some of these different programs and some of the pros and cons that you need to keep in mind in the long run. But if you did want to know anything else, leave it in the comment section below. I'll try my best to answer you and I will consult with the student as well to get a little bit more information for them. But uh, we'll see you all in the next video. Hope you guys all have a great week and everyone take care.